Well, you know, Dawn just talked to us about how we need to be wise. And so one of the ways that we're going to be wise today is we're going to talk about interviewing your banker before joining their bank. Well, our next guest is here to explain why you should. Never thought about that. Ross Allen Hill, welcome to Real Life. Yay! It's good to be here. Thank you for having me. Wow. So I think today is on wisdom, how we're going to be wise. And one of the ways I want to be wise, which I hadn't thought about, is by interviewing a banker, your banker, or a potential banker. Why should we do that? Well, you know, it's interesting. When people go to the bank, they get interviewed. That's right. And the banker decides whether they want to do business with this person. Mm -hmm. But the person never really thinks through the idea that they should interview the banker. Right, that's true. And, and mm -hmm. they need to do that to find a, out a pers if they can have a personal relationship with this banker. It, they should be praying about it. What's mm -hmm. God telling them? The last thing anybody needs is to have a banker that you don't have a friendship with, don't have a relationship mm -hmm. with, and God hasn't said to you that, uh, the, through the Holy Spirit that this is a good place to be. Well, especially when you are dealing with your money. That's right. You know, it's your money that you are either putting in the bank or taking out of it. So I, what would be some questions that we should ask the banker? Well, if you're, if you're uh, making a deposit, you should find out if this person has a knowledge mm -hmm. and has experience in dealing with these kinds of things. And you should ask questions that deal with what you see in your future. How effective are they at helping you plan a savings plan and mm -hmm. plan for retirement? If they have experience with that and you have a relationship with this person, it'd be a great person to pick to be your banker. That's right. On the loan side, mm -hmm. you need to be asking the banker, well, what, how many times have you made this kind of a loan? How many of these loans do you have in your portfolio? How many does the bank have in its portfolio? Just mm -mm. because the door or the sign over the door says bank, right. we all do things and we all specialize in things. So you're saying like if I'm going in and I am going to meet with a loan officer and I want to buy a house, I can, there's more to just saying I want information on a loan. That's right. Mm -hmm. you know, not all banks make home loans okay. to begin with and some specialize in that. Okay. And if I was going to get a home loan, I'd want to go to a bank that specializes in that. There's so many bank regulations today that if you just pick any banker off the street, they may or may not know how to do that home loan. Wow. And you also mentioned about uh, finding out their portfolio. What is a portfolio and, and what does that, how does that impact me? Great question. A mm -hmm. portfolio is just how many loans does the bank have that such as what you asked, mortgage loans. How many do they have on their books? How many loans do they hold? That constitutes their portfolio. Okay. And so, like in my bank, I'm in Oklahoma, uh, a lot of people like to borrow money for oil and gas ventures. Okay. And so they think any bank would do oil and gas. We don't have one oil and gas loan in our bank. Oh, you don't? No. Okay. So if mm -hmm. you wanted an oil and gas loan and you picked me to be your banker, it'd be disaster. <laughs> okay. But bankers make their money through making loans. And okay. unfortunately, sometimes they make loans they don't really have the expertise to do oh. because they can make money. Wow, so I'm coming to you and I find out that you have the portfolio for what I'm looking for for my home or whatever. What would be some questions I need to ask my loan officer other than what's the interest rate and that kind of stuff? Yeah. How, how many loans does he have okay. in, or she have in that particular area? Like in housing, that's how many? Right. Out, that's okay, so and, it shows experience, right. And what is their loan authority? Okay. Is the person you're talking to have the authority to make the loan that you need? Mm -hmm. uh, or, or does it go to some committee that you have, uh, will never meet? Oh, you know, that's happened to our mortgages, that, you know, in the past in which you think it stopped at one company, but it, it went on to somebody else. And mm -hmm. the final result was somebody else in another state. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, you want your loan, if you, to be made by the person you're talking to. Mm -hmm. That's who you've established a relationship with. And if you're talking to the person that's a front person, which is how a lot of banks operate, mm -hmm. and they gather the information and they turn that information over to a committee of people that you never meet, or mm -hmm. even to a credit officer that you never meet, 
you haven't formed a relationship with the decision maker. Okay. They've isolated you from the decision maker. Mm -hmm. And so many of the subjective reasons for making you a loan disappear. Okay. It's only based on what's written in front of them, black okay. and white. All right. And so, you know, how good is the loan officer that you're talking to in that mm -hmm. situation? Uh, convey the message of why you need the loan and how you're going to repay it. Okay. That's why it's important to have a loan officer that you trust okay. and that you have a relationship with. So once you establish that trust and you get that relationship, what would be some other things to ask or be concerned about? Well, you might want to know uh, what's the collection process. Beyond, mm -hmm. after, after making the loan and securing the loan, how do they service that loan? Mm -hmm. uh, what's the, what does the bank anticipate and expect for you to do as the borrower? Okay. And what can you expect the bank to do in managing your loan? Um. How often will they contact you for additional financial information or mm -hmm. things like that? Oh, okay. So you wanna know the whole process, not just, most people get focused on getting the money in their right. account mm -hmm. and then they have hard feelings later because they haven't really thoroughly investigated the whole process mm. and come to a better understanding of what to expect from the bank. So I, it just makes me think about that to be wise, right. that we need to take the uh, to take the driver's seat and we need to be the one in, contr in control of this process of seeking a loan officer and securing and then being able to go forward with uh, the loan and being happy with the service. That's exactly right. Yeah. You know, it reminds me of the scripture where God tells us to count the cost. Yes. Mm -hmm. And if you try to use a loan officer that you uh, don't have a relationship with mm -hmm. and you're having trouble communicating with, uh, that's rather foolish. That is. And if you don't understand the entire process and what it's going to cost you, both financially and in uh, updating financial records, right. you haven't counted all the cost. That's right. So you're not being wise from a scriptural standpoint at all. Well, that's what we want to be is wise. Thank you so much. We yeah. really appreciated your wisdom and sharing with us and we'll be right back.